Welcome to today's episode of Cole Can Do, where I'm going to show you how to make data merge infographics in Adobe InDesign using the Chartwell Bars font. The top line here represents vector graphics versions of the infographics, and the bottom line represents photographic versions of the infographics. As we go through the records, you'll see that the infographics change. It also tells you that Australians drink a hell of a lot of alcohol. And these are very real statistics. Feel free to check them out yourself. So without further ado, let's find out how these infographics are achieved. Before we begin, these techniques are only possible using the Chartwell Bars font available from Font Font. The entire typeface isn't necessary, just the Chartwell Bars font. I'll leave a link in the description below. The first technique I'll demonstrate is one similar to this article that appeared in InDesign Secrets that I had written. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's create the scalable bottle infographics that were shown earlier. This file contains vector graphics of bottles both upright and sideways. This trick works by turning the graphic into a text frame by clicking on the graphic with the text tool and then typing the statistic into the frame with the chartball bars font. The text frame then has the auto size frame feature applied to be either based on width or width and height depending on the effect required. So that the type won't stop short of the bottleneck, I center its top to bottom position and make sure the font is skinny enough to fit. I've done this ahead of time for the video using this blue shaded text frame, but this does require some trial and error based on your specific chart. But why are we preparing the graphics sideways? because the chart wall bars font goes from left to right, and so must the text frame. Once the graphics are set up, they can then be rotated to the correct position. Unfortunately, this method has its drawbacks. The shape must have a start and finish that the type must be able to fill, and it won't accurately reflect low values such as zero or one because the text frame maintains a minimum size. So this is an interesting method, but it's not foolproof. But let's look at some other methods that are much better. The next method displays the infographic as if the liquid in the bottle represents a quantity. It employs the previous technique, except this time the auto-sized text frame is a blue rectangle that is pasted into the bottle and lined up accordingly. As with the earlier infographics, there is an issue with displaying low values. Unlike the earlier infographics, this can be overcome to draw a square that is 2mm in size and paste it as an inline graphic at the start of the text frame, and then offset the position of the graphic within its container to the left by 2mm. To hide the unfilled portion of the bottle, there are two ways to do this. The easiest is to apply the no fill or stroke to the bottle shape. The other way is to create an auto sized text frame above the bottle with the same properties as the fills used previously. Then make a graphic frame that is larger than the bottle and anchor it to the text frame, making sure that its anchored object reference is to the centre left of the nine point proxy that its anchored reference position point is to the center right of the nine point proxy, and the relative measurement in each case is zero millimeters to the text frame. At the moment, it just looks like blue and yellow rectangles next to each other. If the yellow rectangle is given the fill color of paper and via the effects palette made to multiply with a percentage of zero, then we can see the whole bottle. If the blue rectangle is given a fill and stroke of none, the bottom of the bottle becomes visible. Once these elements are highlighted by clicking and dragging the cursor, grouped, 
and via the effects palette the knockout group is checked on, suddenly the top of the bottle disappears. To hide the Chartwell Bars font, highlight the text and give it a fill and stroke of none. This technique can also be applied to photographs, not just vectors. I'll apply the same effects I applied to the vector bottle to demonstrate this. More importantly, as I cycle through records in data merge, the top of the bottle changes size. To make the infographic more impressive, I've made a lighter grayscale version of the bottle and placed it behind the dynamic portion of the graphic. That's it for another video. If you got something out of this video, show me by hitting the like button and subscribe for more great videos. Check out Col Can Do or InDesign Secrets for the latest articles or tweet me at Col Can Do. Until next time, I'll see you later.